Welcome to the Audio Fit Test Podcast, where we talk about fitness and exercise for real people. Everyone has a break from training and exercise at some point. Now, I've always said that for any fitness goal, the hardest part of the journey is getting to your first set of results. In this episode, I want to dish out some extremely important advice to help you get back into exercise, get your goals back on track, and share some personal experience to help put things into perspective. Hey, I'm fitness author James Atkinson from gymshealthandmuscle.com, yourfitnesssuccess.com, and obviously the Audio Fit Test podcast. Today, we're talking how to start exercising again. This is also relevant if you are looking for info on how to start exercising for beginners, if it's your first time on this journey. So routine is a big deal when it comes to earning results from fitness, diet and exercise. If you've designed your fitness routine around your lifestyle well and it fits nicely into your daily activities, or better still, it works in synergy with your normal daily activities, you'll find it easier to stick to and This is actually one of the big points that I always try to drill into people that are starting weight loss or fitness for the first time. But what happens if your daily activities and normal routine gets interrupted somehow? You could change your working hours or change your job completely, which can be a real challenge with fitness for some people. Uh, You could take on new unavoidable responsibilities or, I don't know, There could be a pandemic or something causing gyms to close and forcing you to self-isolate. And it's fair to say that the events of 2020 and 2021 kind of threw a spanner in the works for most of us. It was a tough time for most of us too. And life as we knew it was drastically changed overnight. And the phrase lockdown became used outside of detention centres and the, the prison break franchise. Of course, there was a lot going on, a lot of uncertainty, and the majority of people's lives, routines, changed drastically overnight. So there was no lead up to change or chance to drip feed or slowly introduce new habits. We all know what happened and we all have our own stories to tell. So I don't want to fixate on COVID-19. I want to help you get back into fitness, exercise, and continue working effectively towards your goals. The pandemic, after all, is something that everyone can relate to, so it's a great example to use for this topic. Whether you're looking to lose weight, tone up, build muscle strength and size, or you want to work towards functional training, a loss of routine and the ability to train for an extended amount of time will have the same effect on us all. We'll lose our progress, take backward steps, lose momentum and lose motivation. When this happens, I don't care who you are or where you've come from, it's always a challenge to start up again and put the work in to get back to where you were. Not just physically, but mentally as well. Fitness goals have always been a part of my life and I've done this for as long as I can remember, so There have been many breaks and times where I've had to start again. So when it happens to me, I know that it can be done and I just do the work to get back. This is why I always have the most respect for people that have always been out of shape and now decided to get into weight loss and fitness and get results for the first time. This is more impressive to me than say, a long-distance runner who has had a break for a few years but decided to get back into it and then completes an ultramarathon, for instance, or a boxer that gets really out of shape but then decides to make a comeback and gets totally ripped and gets back in the ring. Sure, it's hard for these guys too, it's hard for everyone, but every time I start to train after a long break, I never neglect to think about how much harder it would be if this was my first rodeo and my first attempt at a fitness goal. So I want to share my experience to help put things into perspective before suggesting possible tips that you can use if you're having the same struggles or similar struggles. So before the gyms closed, I had a great routine where my morning alarm would go off at about 4.45am there would be the standard 15 minute snooze before getting ready to leave the house 
with my porridge oats, scoop of whey protein in a shaker, and my takeout coffee. There was a 20 minute drive to the pub cleaning job that I was tricked into doing, but that is another story totally. <laughs> the, the drive was a scenic one, and a coffee and a chilled drive to the pub was a great start to the day for me. Once I was at the pub, I'd get my headphones in, listen to a Joe Rogan's podcast, something to do with World of Warcraft, something about how to be a better self-published author, or a music playlist if I felt like singing to myself and didn't fancy learning anything new that day. I'd also use this job as a light cardio session. If you think about it, the muscle groups used and the actual movement of mopping floors, you can really take advantage of this. I actually even learned to mop left-handed so I wouldn't get any imbalance of muscle groups. And that's how my mind works. But once the cleaning was done, this would take about an hour and an hour and a half, something like that, or two hours max. I'd add hot water to my rolled oats and protein shake that I bought with me and I'd sit down on one of the tables to eat this and I'd check my book sales for the day before while often scratching my head at the amount of money I'd spent on advertising too. But I did something productive while I was uh, while I was getting this porridge and protein shake in. Once I was finished at the pub and was fueled up for a training session, I'd head straight to the gym to lift some weights. My goals have always been to build muscle mass and definition, so training would vary and run in cycles. But the routine as to where I fit these training sessions in would always be the same or very similar. And once I'd finished at the gym, I'd head home in time to get the car back for Mrs. Jim's health and muscle so she could go to work. We only have one car between us, this is why I set out so early and we make it work. Fitting training in around your lifestyle is a massive help and I've talked about this before so I won't go into it much here but you can see how, how we make it work. So usually by 9, 9.30 a.m. I'm sat at my PC ready to work on writing fitness books, planning podcast episodes, figuring out advertising and maybe marketing <laughs> and things like this. Now I'm working on building my own business. Eating and diet is another major consideration in my life, as it should be for anyone, as it dictates how effective your fitness training will be and it has a massive influence on your overall physique. So it won't surprise you if I told you that I knew what times I would eat and that I had plans throughout my working day. So all of this was a great routine that we made work. I had my work days planned and linked into my training and my diet was on point. I was happily going along with this, working towards my fitness goals, when one Friday evening I'm told that I no longer needed to clean the pub. My gym closed its doors and we should only go out of the house if it was essential. To be honest, my first reaction was a bit of relief. I was being told just to chill out at home and don't go to work. Immediately after my first reaction, I felt disappointment because I lost my gym. I'm lucky to have a really happy home life, so this instruction to stop doing everything was kind of welcomed by us overall. The first night of lockdown, as we watched the film Contagion, yes, this was actually shown on the TV, I suggested to Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscle that we get into a routine as soon as possible. I could carry on working on my fitness books business, get a training routine sorted out with exercise bands. After all, I literally wrote the book on home workouts with exercise bands, so this was easy for me to do. With all these plans in place, however, I did struggle to get into the swing of things. Work-wise, it was hard to concentrate as the house was busier than normal, and I always need maximum concentration to get things created, learn about marketing, advertising platforms and such. This has always been difficult for me as I'm, I'm not an academic so I became very unproductive with content creation and the actual growth of the business. When it came to training, I'd been lifting heavy weights using barbells and dumbbells, squatting around 120 kilograms as my main workload, shoulder pressing around 50 kilograms for 10 to 12 reps, for example, and 
this is hard to replicate with exercise bands. Don't get me wrong, exercise bands are an amazingly versatile bit of kit and everyone who has a slight interest in resistance training should own a set. But at that time, the goals that I had with resistance training needed heavy weights, the kind you would find in a gym to achieve and to get where I wanted to be. So the resistance bands weren't the best fit for achieving my personal goals. So right away, I had to change my fitness goals. The problem was that my goal and mindset for training at that time was to put on muscle mass by doing big lifts with heavy barbells and dumbbells, and I was making good progress. This was, of course, cut short when the gyms closed. I had to do some form of training to keep myself active, so I settled for resistance bands as they were my best bet. On the diet side of things, it became difficult right away. Not being able to get hold of the normal fresh food we routinely buy was one challenge. But I'm the cook in our house, so I had extra cooking or meal prep responsibilities throughout the day. Normally, my main cooking job is an evening meal, and this is for myself and Mrs. Jim's Health and Muscle. I'm going to call her Tammy from now on because she features later. <laughs> well, this was not a problem, but when making food for both of us, I always put in a bit of extra effort with flavour and try to make it a bit more exciting rather than having a mindset of, here's my carbs, here's my protein, and here's the fat. So this is where the slippery slope started. Another observation of myself when it came to diet is that I will eat for function based on my training goals and my goals had been lost, so there was no need to keep the diet up. Now, of course, this is not what you should do, and I know this, but as the changes and the uncertainty just led me my mind down this road. Now, as the days and weeks went by, I started treating lockdown as a big holiday. Work-wise, I became incredibly unproductive, I was unbelievably lucky with income as one of my book niches is home workouts and I saw a big spike in sales as these books were already well established. We also have savings so that took the worry out of the finance for us. I've mentioned this a lot as well, I play the online game World of Warcraft and have done for years so I've made some great friends in this community and most of these guys were off work too so it made it really easy to log into the game and hang out with them. My motivation for exercise faded with my muscle mass and it was made worse that I wasn't eating the right foods. I would train with resistance bands every now and then but it was a really hot summer and the lack of motivation and being uncomfortable made this a real chore. The one thing that we did do every single day without fail, however, was go for a two mile dog walk with our little buddy Lebowski, the Jack Russell. We're also really lucky to live in a rural area, so this was a daily highlight for us. So as the lockdown carried on, my diet got worse, I would eat basically what I wanted and sometimes I just wouldn't eat because I wasn't hungry and the exercise was pretty minimal and lack lackluster or ad hoc. I do it every now and then and, and that won't really get you results or it won't get you anywhere. So when the gyms finally opened again and we were able to get back to training, I was out of routine, out of shape probably the most out of shape I've been in years, if not ever. So I got my hoodie on, unusual training kit, and headed to the gym. My goals were the same as they were before the lockdown, but I'd lost a lot of muscle mass, strength, and stamina. I was also holding a lot more body fat than I had in a long time. I actually think that this was the worst shape I've been in for as long as I can remember, and it was for sure the longest break I've had from the gym since I started lifting, which is a big deal. So you might be thinking at this point, Jim, you are a massive fraud. You wrote the book on fitness motivation and preach about mindset, focus, sticking to your goals and planning. You should be leading by example. But guess what? 
I'm only human like everyone else and I'm not going to hide my faults. To be able to write and advise about this stuff effectively, to make it worth something to others, I think it's best coming from someone who's, who's lived it, is honest and can empathise. Rather than saying, I'm a personal trainer with a six pack and I never eat chocolate, or when I'm out with the lads, I only drink water and I stay away from alcohol, and I never lose focus and I'm always confident. Yes, I have doubts. Yes, I stumble and fall as well, like everyone else. And yes, I sometimes eat chocolate and drink beer with the lads, but, but not at the same time. I mean, chocolate and beer. Blech. But I knew it would be a struggle to get back to where I was and thought I was prepared. On my last training sessions leading up to the lockdown, I was squatting 120 kilograms for 12 reps, shoulder pressing 50 kilograms for 12 reps with an Olympic bar, and my training sessions would last about an hour. At the end of each session, I'd be feeling good about my progress. I could see it working on my physique, and I was looking forward to my next session. The first month back in the gym, when they reopened, I was struggling to squat 40 kilograms for 12 reps and shoulder pressing 30 kilograms if I was lucky. There were obviously more exercises involved, but these are the two examples that I remember more vividly than others. I also really struggled through these sessions and always felt pretty exhausted at the end. The only thing that kept me staying consistent with the training was that I knew in a month or two I would be back to where I was and my goal to get there was motivating. This was a certainty because, like I said, it was far from my first rodeo and I knew exactly what needed to be done. Now this goes back to my admiration for anyone who's starting off on a weight loss or fitness goal for the first time. I know exactly what to do in the gym, what to eat and how my body responds to training and diet. So as I see it, I've got a massive advantage over anyone else who's getting into it for the first time. And yet, I still saw the first month as a huge mountain to climb and often doubted myself in the gym. I also knew without doubt that if I did what I preach, I'd get there. And this is something that beginners don't have. And it was the only thing that kept me going. My goal, consistency and sticking with it is also something that I've written about in great length and I'd always tried my best to lay out a clear path for anyone who's starting this for the first time as I can honestly empathise with them. I want everyone to get past the self-doubt and early stages because I know my account of this is nothing compared to some. And once you get to the first set of results, you see progress. The only thing you have is faith that it will work. To get by on this alone, I think, is amazing. So if you've done it, I totally doth my cap to you. <laughs> and I know that people out there that are listening to this have been on this journey and they've done this because I've had emails from, from you guys. And these emails, and you guys getting in touch with me, I'll just add here, is something that gives me motivation to carry on doing what I'm doing. So thanks to anyone that's got in touch with me, has read my books and got back to me and told me about their success and their progress. I love to hear about this stuff, and it does keep me going. See, I held off with the creation of this podcast episode as I made it part of my motivation when getting back into the gym. To be more specific, I decided that once I was back to where I was before my extended break, this was when it would be created. So this very morning, my alarm went off at 4.45am, I headed to the pub to do my cleaning job, yep, we've got this job back, I ate my porridge oats and protein shake and went to the gym where I did 4 sets of squats at 120 kilograms for 10 reps, shoulder press 50 kilograms for 3 sets of 12 reps and had a very satisfying session of bicep curls. I feel positive about my progress again, my diet is back on track, my physique has a decent shape again, and all this has taken about two and a half months. 
I think the messages in this podcast episode are extremely important for anyone wanting to get back into training and are especially important for the total beginner. The reason I held off with this episode is that I wanted to experience the full journey myself, be in the right mindset. The last thing I want to be is like one of those social media influencers that tout fitness motivation or fitness advice and don't live it themselves. Anyway, I don't like to just give accounts and talk about my experience without without also talking about actionable steps that you can take if you have or are having the same struggles. Maybe this is enough for some and the messages in my account are clear, but I'd still like to leave a, a short checklist or a few points to follow as a kind of summary to take away. Remember your goal and train to achieve it. There's two parts to this. The first one is that you have to have a good enough goal to keep you motivated. If you're unsure of your goal, ask yourself why you want to exercise in the first place. What do you want to achieve and why? This may sound silly and you might be thinking that it's obvious, but if you can be specific and define your goals on an emotional level, you'll have a better understanding of what you really want. So training to achieve your goal The more you know about the training effects of different exercise, the better you will understand this. So this is why I always go on about self-help and self-education when it comes to the subject of fitness and weight loss. If you're training in the right way to get the results that you want, you will get your results quicker and this will keep you motivated. If you look at what happened to me when my goal was to build strength and size and my options were limited to training with resistance bands at a level that would not challenge me as much as training with heavy barbells and free weights, this training didn't align directly with my goals. Sure I could have settled for a leaner more toned look and if I was motivated enough to do this I could have come out of the lockdown being totally ripped but with less bulk. But this was not my goal and the training didn't align, so I lost my motivation. So make sure you identify your goal very specifically and build a training routine that will give you the effect you want. So if you want strength, go to the gym and lift heavy weights with compound movements. If you want fat loss and muscle tone, do circuit training with higher reps and maybe resistance bands. If you want to be a better runner, make sure you follow a progressive cardio training plan. This is a very basic overview and there's a lot more to it than that, but hopefully you get the gist. Basic routine aligned with your goals is better than a really in-depth routine that's not aligned with your goals. Next thing, pick a resource that you trust and stick to the plan. This builds on the last tip. There are loads of ways to train with resistance and cardio and there are loads of different personal trainers, media resources and marketing companies pushing their ideas to train. And I've seen some disgusting video ads that would definitely have sold their idea to me if I didn't know what I know now and have the experience that I've had. So once you've defined your goals, Find and devise a plan to follow from somewhere that is trustworthy. When it comes to looking for fitness advice in this day and age, you should be sceptical. The more you learn, the further along your fitness journey you go, the more this will become apparent. Learn about what your body needs in order to achieve your specific goal and then go looking for a resource that will help you in your training sessions. But if you're newer to this game, you should approach this with a bit of scepticism, as I've already said, especially when searching the internet. Once you have a good plan that you can follow, stick to it. From my account, you can see that it took me two and a half months to get back to where I was, and this was after the best part of a year's break. So it's important that you give your plan time to work. Stick with it rather than deciding it's not working after a week or two and then go looking for something else. I know it can be tempting because I've been there myself, but if you see something new, maybe just make a note of it, 
give the training that you're doing at the minute a bit more of a chance and then go back to that at a later date. But certainly don't chop and change training routines and diff- to different ideas as they pop up as you're looking. The last thing, have faith in the process. As mentioned, this is hard. Those that do manage to succeed with fitness goals for the first time and get to the point where they see their first results probably immediately forget that having faith in the process was what got them through. And the people that lose faith and decide to keep looking for the ultimate training routine or diet that will work for them and never stick to anything long enough for it to work won't be aware of this and may give up before getting anywhere. But if you are listening to this, I've made you aware of it, so you'll have an advantage over those that aren't. And the truth is that there are many training methods and diet ideas that will give you a similar or exactly the same result out there to follow. So be aware of breakthrough weight loss advice or breakthrough weight loss diets or fitness industry secrets. There are no secrets. The more you learn about the human body, the more time you spend around people who have a passion for fitness and exercise or fitness professionals themselves, the more you'll understand about fitness results and how to get exactly what you want out of your training. Well, this has been a slightly longer episode than usual, but I think it's a really important one, so I was happy to put it together. I've not been as consistent as I've liked with these podcast episodes as other things like writing new fitness books and learning about selling more fitness books has to take priority. I do, however, love to create these podcast episodes and it would be awesome to monetize it so I can sink more time into it. But at the moment, I gotta keep the lights on so the stuff that helps me do that has to get more attention. But what I will aim to do is to get at least one episode out every month with some useful advice, some tips to follow. But all of the episodes that I've done so far are evergreen and relevant to fitness progression. So if this is your first time here, have a look through the previous episodes. Um, If you found this one useful, there's stuff that will always help people out. If you do want to help me grow this podcast and you found it useful or even enjoyed it, podcast reviews on the platform that you get your podcasts from are extremely valuable to me and they will help me out more than you know. And with that, thanks for listening. You are awesome. All the best, Jim.